Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We have another episode of Hobby Table. We're just going to spend a little bit of time showing you what I am currently working on. Um, behind the scenes, prepping for games. Um, as you can see in front of you here, we have a number of um, miniature, miniatures that are currently in progress um, for a number of different games, a number of different projects. Um, I'll also be showing you um, some of the games that I'm sort of prepping parts for, sort of print and play sort of card or board games that I'll be hopefully featuring fairly soon. But like I say, it's just a, just a quick, this, um, this uh, series of videos, Hobby Tables, just a very quick look at what I am working on, just in case you guys are interested. So what we have in front of us here is a bunch of miniatures from, uh, these are from Thingiverse. These are from, I think, Ralpartha. It's from an old D&D &D box set. I think it's called Dragon Mountain or something. A couple of spiders here. We have a Rackham uh, Lone Wolf, Wolfen figure, which I'll be using for my Five Leaves from the Borderland. Uh, we have a bunch here of figures from Bestiarum as well. So let's take a look and see what I'm currently doing. Let's start off with these little critters at the back. So these are spiders. And I can already see hairs. Yeah, I've got cats. My cats tend to walk all over my bloody tables. Um, but yeah, um, five leagues from the borderland. Little spoiler. My next battle, I'm going to be fighting giant bugs. So what I did was I downloaded from Thingiverse these spider files. And they're free. I'll, I'll put the link down in the description below. Um, but there are this this particular design. There are two styles. There is one with like both front claws on the ground, and there is one I think you can see on the end here with one of his legs, his front legs lifted up a little bit. Now these come um, with the base as one uh, one model, and I am having a little bit of trouble with these because. My plan in terms of painting them hasn't really worked. I wanted to get like a web effect on the ground, the base. Hasn't really worked. And in terms of the actual spiders themselves, I don't know how, how close I can get with this. The spiders themselves, I don't know, they're just not... I don't know, they're just not standing out enough. I think I still need to apply some more color, some more highlights to these until I'm kind of satisfied with how they look but yeah i'm gonna need a lot of these like i say i have i have printed out 11 of these and like i say they're i mean they could be done they are mm, i would say they are table standard not good table standard but probably enough but uh, i'm not really happy with how they're turning out i did um I did some basic colors. I did some washes. But like I say, they, they haven't really turned out. I don't know. They just seem to be lacking something. They just seem to be very bland. Is bland the right word? I think maybe a, a couple of highlights more. Maybe a different color for the legs. I'm not, not, too, not too happy about the legs. Um, I've done the white for the eyes and for the the front toothies but yeah I'm, I'm not happy with these at the moment so these still need a little bit of work so the next episode of five bought five leagues from the borderlands is going to be delayed until i get these completed um they do have a leader um and for the leader spider <laughs> the leader bug the big bug i will be using one of these now i did paint up two of them I'll be using one as the leader for these spiders in the Borderlands game. And like I say, these are from Ralpartha, an old box set. I'll put a picture up so you can see. But yeah, these are... I think they're supposed to be some kind of brain spider, some kind of... I don't know, some special kind of spider monster in D&D, &D, the old advanced Dungeons and Dragons. So it's, it's a fairly old miniature, but... You know, it, it kind of works as a boss spider. <laughs> so 
So yeah, I've painted these up. Now these didn't actually come with bases. So what I've done is I've actually printed out a base from Bestiarum um, and stuck it onto a, a plastic base here. This is from the Remade set, which is kind of like a Dark Elf stroke, Drow stroke, um, is it Lilith or Lilith or Loth, the Spider Goddess kind of set. So I printed out one of the bases. I think this is from... I can't remember what set this was from. It's from the remade, but I can't remember exactly what what miniatures this base was from. The Swollen? Is it called the Swollen? I'll put, again, I'll, I'll put a reference picture up in editing. But yeah, this is the base that I printed out for it. It has the little egg sacs here with the web. You've got a few rocks, you've got a bit of ground, you've got a few skulls and bones. Um, now, for this base, and also, zoop! Also for the bases down here, which we'll talk about in a second, I used speed paints, the Army Painter speed paints, but again, I'm not really happy how it's turned out. Now, for the rocks, let's just put this down here for a second. For the rocks, I used Grave Lord Grey. For the egg sacks or for the spider oh, sorry the uh, like the web sacks I use the holy white and then for the for the sort of ground I used well I used what I thought would work in sand golem yeah I mean, it's got the word sand in it <laughs> but I don't know I I don't like the way I don't like the way it's Ended up, I think the, the rocks are a bit too dark. There's a bit of splotchiness from the paint. So again, I'm going to have to highlight. But I really don't like the way that the sand golem paint. It's orange. It's really orange. I was expecting it to be a, I don't know, sand colour? A more sort of beigey colour, maybe? But it's bright orange. I don't like it. <laughs> Um, the holy white, the spider, the, sorry, the, the web egg sacs, perfectly happy. Absolutely no problems with that whatsoever. So the, um, the holy white, no problems whatsoever with that. But the grave lord grey, I don't know. It, I mean, it was dark. I was expecting it to be dark, but it's very splotchy. Uh, the sand golem was not what I was expecting. I was expecting a very sort of beige kind of yellowy beige for the sand, I mean, look, look what it, look at the colours on the bloody bottle. That's not orange. And look how it turned out. Ugh, don't like it. I've got so, I've got to, I've got to do some more work on these bases because, like I say, I'm I'm not liking the the sand golem colour, and the the grey for the rocks is a bit bit darker than I was expecting. And like I say, it's very blotchy. So this needs a little bit of work, um, and I will be using. Oops, I will be using this as a base for one of these, one of these spiders, and then this will be the boss for the widow spiders, for the little bugs for my Borderlands game. So this is still work in progress. This, this is, I mean, these spiders I'm okay with, not too, not, I'm, uh, they're fine. These spiders still need a bit of work. This base needs a lot of work. I'm, I'm not happy with that sand color whatsoever. Now speaking of that. Those colours, I also did the bases here for some of these Ungaroth figures. These are from a previous um, Bestiarum set, the Ungaroth. I did a video, I'll put a link to the video up here. I did a video on this set, love the models, and like I say, with some of the models I've already based them, um, not a problem, but these, these warriors are going to be a problem because... If I base, especially these two, if I attach these to the bases, and they have they have individual bases, yeah, um, it's going to be extremely difficult for me to paint the details and also to paint the rock. So, I I'm painting the bases first before I attach the models. But again, I'm having the same problem with the color choice. The the grey is a little bit darker than I expected, and again, it's very blotchy. I'm, 
I don't know, watching the, the, the speed paint videos on the YouTube and everything else, it's just not what I was expecting. And again, look how bloody orange the sand is. That's supposed to be sand. It's like a Cheeto or whatever, what's it's, if you remember what's it's, the crisps. <laughs> it's like the color of what's it's. Uh, so again, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to work on uh, on re redoing these colors or maybe doing some shading, some washing, some highlighting on those until I'm happy with those. And then I can, I can look into painting these or attaching these and paint and uh, painting these, these figures up. Again, if you want to, if you want to actually see more on these, these 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 figures or the Ongaroth series, I do have a video which um, covers the whole set. Uh, at the back here, we have a number of what's the, is, is it is the word cocoons, spider victims, and again, these are from the uh, remade set from Bestiarum, one of their more recent sets. So these are victims that have been bound with web kind of awaiting to have all their bodily juices sucked out by the spiders <laughs> so i printed out a bunch of these the remade set includes a number of these different models um you got some which are kind of curled up sort of fetal position come on focus i mean they're very nice and these are going to be terrain terrain pieces in my next Borderlands game involving these spiders, obviously. Um, with these, I printed them out, um, and I'm kind of... I'm still thinking about how I want to base these. In terms of painting them, um, I'm just going to I'm just gonna go with the, the holy white that I used for the egg sacs on here, or the spider web sacs on here, because it, it turned out well here. So I'm, I'm assuming it's going to work out well on these. So I'm just going to use this. Very simple paint job. But I'm still thinking how I'm going to base these. Um, and before I paint them, I need to know how I'm going to base them. So this is, again, work in progress. All right, what else do we have here? Okay, finally, the last thing on this part. I've got some other things to show you afterwards. But the last thing to show you on this particular set is this... Rackham figure, this Wolfen. Uh, here is the card, the Rackham card for the game Confrontation. This is the miniature that I'll be using for my new Warband member in Five Leagues from the Borderlands. I got a Feral. A Feral follower. So again, because in Five Leagues from the Borderlands I'm trying to use as much Rackham as I can, I will be using this Wolfen. Now this was actually in a blister. I hadn't actually assembled this figure before. So I had to assemble, undercoat, uh, I gave it a black wash, and that is the current status. So this has been undercoated or primed. It has also had a black wash, and it's now ready to be painted. I love this model. I really do like, like the Rackham models. So yeah, this is going to be part of my war band for five leagues from the borderlands my leader i think is out for three turns so i had to recruit somebody to kind of fill his spot um and this is going to be the guy now i've painted devourers before but i haven't actually painted wolfen any of the rack and wolfen so yeah, this is going to be a, a learning experience but yeah so this is my my Wolfen, my Rackham Wolfen that I'll be using in Five Leagues from the Borderlands. Right, let's um, let's take a look at some of the actual games that I'm kind of prepping ready for videos. Let's move over there. All right, so here you can see a few bits and pieces from my print and play prep. <laughs> uh, right in front of us here, I'm currently in the middle of recording for this game this is going to be another Todd Sanders game that I'm going to be um, putting up on the channel called The Drugger um, over here is expansion number two for quests over coffee again I have done a video on this game I'll put the link up here a very enjoyable little game uh, with wonderful cute aesthetics Really nice little mechanism, really fun little game. And like I say, I've got Expansion 2. I've just printed it out. 
So these need to be cut and the corners need to be uh, uh, rounded and cut as well. I'll be putting them into card sleeves and adding them to the game. I, I really do enjoy this game, Quest Over Coffee. Really enjoyable game. Watch my video. Again, I'll put the link in the corner there. Um, what else? Okay, over here, over here, I've got another game which is currently in prep stage. We have a couple of playboards. We've got the rules and everything in the little folder underneath. Uh, and we've also, I've also been making a bunch of tokens for the game. So we have, again, this is kind of a, a bit of an experiment. I think the game kind of really wants to have sort of uh, miniatures, but I, I thought I'd take a different route for this. So I'm currently making these little tokens for the monsters, um, tokens for the characters. Yeah, these, are, these are basically just printed and mounted on this artboard. Um, also, in terms of terrain, again, you, you kind of... It kind of expects sort of 3D terrain, I think. Um, but, like I say, I'm making terrain sort of 2D, again, mounted on this board. Just just to, sh just to kind of show the game um, a different way, so that you don't need to have miniatures, and maybe this can be a much more sort of travel version. Um, in terms of packaging, in terms of storage, it would have a much smaller requirement, space requirement. Um, so like I say, I mean, this this game does have, I think there are a couple of videos already on the YouTube, um, and like I say, they, they do use miniatures and, like I say, some some physical props and, and terrain pieces and whatever, but I'm going to go a different way with this. I'm going to use tokens, you know, just to show people that you don't need to have the right miniatures, you don't need to have miniatures to play games like this. With a lot of these print-and-play games, a lot of the time you don't need to use um expensive products like terrain pieces or uh, miniatures or anything like that a lot of the time with these print and play games you can actually just get away with tokens so for this particular game which i don't really want to i mean some of you can probably guess which one it is um but i'm gonna i'm gonna try and do a video from a slightly different point of view just to kind of highlight what can be done um, i think i have the first expansion in there as well and i think i have done um, all the tokens for the first expansion as well. But yeah, so uh, this Draugr is a game that's going to be uploaded fairly soon. I've just got a little bit more recording to do on this than the editing, of course. Uh, Quests over coffee, I have already done the video, um, but this is the uh, second expansion. I think was released two days ago, I think. So I'll be just adding that to my pack. And then over here is another game that I'll be featuring and recording fairly soon. I've got a little bit more prep to do for this. And then again, I'll get recording and get, get a video up for you guys. Okay, what else do I need to show you for this hobby table for what I'm currently working on? Well, there is one more thing, something that I kind of promised in the last video. So just give me a couple of secs and I'll show you the, the last part of this video. Right, the last, the last thing I'd like to show you in this episode of the Hobby Table, my Hobby Table, is something that I did promise last episode. I did promise to show you my Enigma miniatures that I, um, that I managed to purchase before the company went tits up. And in, I think in the last video, I showed off one of my favorite miniatures that I've really got to finish off. But like I say, I'm, I'm kind of, I keep, getting miniatures to paint for, <laughs> for games so i can't actually get back to this just yet but like i say i love this miniature this is the bruma by enigma miniatures i really love this like i say i showed you this last in the last episode saying oh i've got to finish this i've got to finish this well yep what has it been like two weeks three weeks i'm still i've got to finish this i've got to finish it <laughs> but in the last episode i did say that i had some other Enigma miniatures, and I actually have five in total. I, I, I didn't buy an extensive amount, um, but I did get five. Um, okay, well, the, the miniatures came with these cards. So this is the card for Bruma, Enigma, Massive Darkness. So this was the card. I don't think I can paint that well, so don't expect my painting to be that good. So this was Bruma. 
a girl here. Very nice miniature. I actually really, really love this miniature. Um, so that's Bruma. What else did I get? I actually got this one. This is called Tokteen. I think his name's Tokteen. A spiny, chaotic dwarf. Now, this one was a bit of a surprise because this is the miniature. It's a, again, it's a lovely miniature. Look at that bloody beard. Lovely beard. Um, huge freaking axe. I love it. I really do like this miniature. Nice, nice uh, cloak in the background. Um, but what surprised me about this miniature was the scale. Uh, this so this is Enigma miniatures. This is what they call a Chaos Dwarf, yeah. Right now, this is a Rackham Midnor Dwarf. Look at a look at a bloody size difference. <laughs> so in uh, in confrontation, the Midnor Dwarves were basically the Chaos Dwarves, the undead dwarves. Look, he comes up to his bloody belt buckle. This is this is supposed to be a Chaos Dwarf. He's huge. He's bloody huge. Compared to Bruma, who's supposed to be a human. Let's get the base. Okay, Bruma's on a bigger base. But look, look at the size difference. They're big dwarves. <laughs> but like I say, I love the model. So I got this, uh, I got this one. Tokti, I think it's Tokteen, the name. Really, really nice model. What else did I get? The third, the third miniature that I have is this one. Uh, Morphus, the hand of Gnoll. Is that Gnoll? Gnoll. It's supposed to be a chaos warrior, basically. Now, for this model, again, massive darkness. Um, for this model, I, I don't know. The, the head didn't really do anything for me in terms of the, the helmeted thing, whatever. It came, I think it came with a couple of different heads. Didn't really, didn't really do much for me. So what I did, what I did is I got one of my spare Boris heads from Heresy. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Heresy miniatures and like I say, was that? bloody cat hairs everywhere. Oh, little sods. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Heresy miniatures. I've got loads and loads of Heresy miniature stuff. And I've got, I've got some extra Boris heads from the big Boris miniatures. And I thought, oh, this, this just suits it. This, this becomes like a Chaos Warrior Boris. Again, if you're familiar with Heresy miniatures, you, you know the, you know the Boris miniatures, yeah? The big Boris miniatures. I, I just, I just looked at this. I was going through all my spare bits and I saw the, these sort of big Boris heads from Heresy. And I just thought, oh, this would, this would, this would suit it perfectly. So, I stuck that on there. Um, I can't... Did I change the axe? I think I changed the axe as well. I honestly can't remember where the axe head came from, but I did change the axe head. I think... Oh, it's been so long. It's a long time since I did this, but I think... I think I changed the axe head as well. But yeah, another really, really nice model. And again, let's, let's take a look at the size. <laughs> I mean, compared to Bruma... Yeah, kind of about the same height compared to the dwarf. Yeah, the dwarf. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Maybe a head taller, that's it. <laughs> All right, that's those. Th these are the three that I've basically assembled, based, um, primed. These two have had a black wash to kind of pick out the details. Um, Bruma has started painting. Um, Again, I mentioned her in the last episode, but I also have another two miniatures from Enigma, um, which are still in the blisters. I haven't done anything with them uh, for, for different reasons. Um, let's look at this one first. This is this is probably my least favorite. This is uh, I'm going to have to turn it because I can't see it. Lathiem Oakleaf. So I think it's, I don't know whether it's supposed to be an elf or maybe some kind of nature barbarian or something. Now, the thing is, when, when I was ordering these, these miniatures, I can't remember where I ordered them from. Um, it was a long, long time ago. And I looked at this one and I saw the sort of the painted picture on the web store and it looked amazing. It really did look good. That's why I, I ordered it along with the other, come on, focus, along with the other miniatures. 
But when I actually got the figure, it's um, it's extremely. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the sculpting or the dis or the sort of sculpting way, but it's just extremely two dimensional. I mean, look how flat it is. From the front, looks good. Even from the back, the back, the cloak looks a really, really nice cloak. But when you look at it from the side, look how two-dimensional it is. And that's why I haven't done anything with this figure yet. I mean, I'll, I'll probably base it and paint it at some point. But it's, uh, it's not, not as good as I was hoping. I was, I was hoping for a little bit more depth to the figure. Like, I won't focus. Like these ones. These figures have good depth to the figure, good three dimensions to the figure. But this little bugger is, oh, look, look, he's so, uh a bit disappointing with this one, to be honest. Can't lie. Can't lie. And then the last figure we've got is a big one. He's a big boy. And this is Anamoth. Anamoth. Now I think there's a I think there's a spelling mistake. It says there the will it focus? The white whitering storm, the wittering storm. I'm not sure whether it's supposed to be the withering storm. But this I obviously as you can see it's a minotaur. And this is a really nice model. It is part resin and part metal. And the the miniature is really, really nice. I was kind of, oh, what's the word, apprehensive, scared that I'd screw it up. I'd do like a bad paint job and stuff. That's why it's still in the blister. And this is why a lot of my, my Rackham figures haven't been painted. Because when you look at the art and the painting that the studio artists have done, it kind of puts you off because you're kind of scared of, of mucking it up, of not doing the miniature justice. <laughs> well, that's my story with Rackham, but it's also the story with this big brute. Um, yeah, let's, let's take him out of the, out of the blister and have, have a look. So yeah, this was a, this is a minotaur that I really like the look of. Let's get the bits out so we can have a butcher's. A uh, lot of bits. Hang on. Hang on one sec. Bonk. I think that's all the bits, right? Now there are, yeah. There's an arm, his horns. There's a uh, weapon for his back. There's his main chopper, with two hands. He's got his own resin base, which he will join onto. Uh, but this, this is what we're looking for, isn't it? <laughs> this is. This is the big boy. This is this is the main resin cast of the figure. And the detail is really, really nice. Yeah, all those stretched tendons and everything, all the all the gristle, the detail. It's a really, really nice figure. Um But yeah, it's not a hundred percent resin. There are some metal parts that we need to add, for example. Um the horns, the horns have to Basically attached to the back of the head like that. Is he going to focus? And when you get focused, eh, kind of. But yeah, the, the horns are separate. Um, the weapon. Well, I mean, you got to stick. You got to. You gotta, oh god, I'm all thumbs. You got to attach this other arm there, and then his weapon. His weapon will attach like that. Bonk, bonk, onto his arms like that. Choppity, choppity, chop. And then this boy will basically attach onto the base. It's a really nice figure. Now, in terms of scale, let's get another Minotaur. This is um, this is one of the best, I think, it's, is it Bestiarum? I think this is Bestiarum uh, Minotaurs that was in a previous set. Um, Let's have a look at the scale. I mean, the Bestiaire and Minotaur is a lot chunkier. But this one's a lot taller. So let's put them down. Let's put them down 
so if we just put them down like that okay you can't really see <laughs> you can't see but yeah if you if i put them roughly like that you can kind of see the size difference the best bestiarian one's a lot chunkier but this one's a lot taller so i don't know i mean would it fit i don't know it has kind of a different design than it i don't know whether it would actually i don't know whether they'd actually work well together or not but yeah this was from a, a recent i think it was bestiarium or maybe it was Archfilin, I can't remember. Um, but the this was a uh, this is another work I've got in progress. I printed it out and I haven't painted yet. You can see here. I actually I actually dropped this bugger. I actually dropped it and the, the horn broke off, so I've had to weld it, but I put too much resin in the weld, so I'm gonna have to clean that up a little bit. But we ain't talking about that one today, we're talking about this bad boy. So yeah, this is a let's get the card. Oink, donk. This is a really, again, like I say, the Enigma miniatures were really nicely done. It's just a shame that they, no, no, they didn't survive. Really nice miniature, really nice design. Let's get the card and have a look at the card. Get a close-up of the card. Where is it? There it is. So, yeah, oops. So, yeah, Enigma. And this is the card. Again, don't expect me to paint it anywhere near as good as this. <laughs> but you can see it looks amazing. It really is a nice miniature. At some point, I'll get it done. <laughs> I've got thousands of miniatures. At some point, I'll get them done. <laughs> but yeah, like I promised, uh, these are some of my Enigma miniatures. Uh, Bruma is half done. I do need to get her. I do need to get her done. But at the moment, I'm kind of painting figures for the games. I'm not really painting for fun so much. The... Even the uh, Tabaxi, is it Tabaxi? The Printed Obsession one I did for the contest. Yeah, again, that was for a contest. It wasn't really painting for fun. I haven't painted for fun for such a long time. It's, it's kind of painting for the YouTube channel at the moment. But anyway, that is what I'm currently working on. This is what I promised to show you. This is not actually stuff I'm actually working on, but stuff that I promised to show you last, last episode. But I do have a bunch of figures, like I say, the Spiders... Um, which are going to be for the next Borderlands game. The Wolfen, the Rackham Wolfen, which again is going to be for the next Borderland game. The um, print and play games that I'm currently prepping, they're going to have videos coming soon. So yeah, busy, busy, busy. Uh, what else? Um, I think that's it for this episode. Like I say, I will try and do these on a fairly semi-regular basis, just to... Just to let you guys see what I'm currently working on, what I'm doing. I'm not going to try and spoil too much. Because um, I don't want people to sort of watch this and have an idea about what I'm going to be doing soon. And then kind of putting videos out before me. <laughs> so I'm not going to spoil too much. Um, but yeah, plenty more to come. Keep an eye on the channel. Spread the word. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I really want to try and reach that 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, if at all possible. All right, guys. So I hope, I hope that was enjoyable. I ho hope you saw some things that maybe piqued your interest or maybe some things that you were looking for um, or maybe things that you can try out. Um, like I say, the, the spiders were a, a free download from Thingiverse. I'll put the link in the in the description below. But yeah, I'll, I'll have another hobby table up in a couple of weeks, maybe two or three weeks, showing you my new batch of things that I'm working on. Um, but yeah, keep an eye on the channel. Plenty more stuff coming. Um, take care of yourselves and stay safe. Cheers, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.